Hey everybody, it's Christy Friesen, and I am going to be your Sherpa into the great descent into polymer clay bliss. So come with me, we're gonna do some more projects as part of this series on the secrets of polymer clay. I'm here at the Fire Mountain Gem and Beads Jewelry Studio, and let me tell you what we've got going on. This is the second of a series of projects that is designed specifically to help you understand polymer clay and make things. So it's not intended to be a big lecture about the history of polymer clay and everything you ever wanted to know. We have other videos for that here at Fire Mountain. So you can go find those anytime. But what I want to do with you today is jump right in to number two project. So if you didn't go see number one, you need to go see that because I talk about stuff there that you might want to know. But now we're going to take it another step. I like to present all of the different things that polymer clay can do in little bite-sized chunks so it's not overwhelming. So today we're going to do swirls and jewels pendant. Swirls and jewels pendant. And I've got a couple samples for you right here of some variations on what that looks like. It could not be a simpler project. We're going to take a blob of clay, we're going to turn it into a shape, and we're going to shove things into it. Doesn't that sound like fun? All right, let's get started. So what we're going to do is work with polymer clay to begin with. Polymer clay just comes in these fun little cubes, and I usually just take my blade and chunk off pieces. Now, when I'm done chunking off pieces for my various projects, I end up with just like a scrap pile of stuff. And that's what I'm going to use today. So I have in my hand some scraps. And you might notice that there's all kinds of little bits and pieces of funky stuff in here. Things from leftover other projects, new colors that amuse me. This is what you need for this project. So see, even your leftover garbage can become something exciting. What's not to love about this material? So I'm going to take this thing that I've got, and I've been holding it secretly in my hand when you weren't watching, to transfer my hot, hot body temperature into the clay which makes it soft and flexible and easy to use because we're going to do a special little blending trick today. Polymer clay is all about the blending. It comes in these lovely little squares of color, but you need to turn it into nuanced color with marbling and stuff like that. So I've taken this, I've flattened it out. If you have a roller nearby, you can flatten it out additionally, or you can just use your hands or, you know, run over it with your car. No, don't run it over with your car. Just use your hands or the roller. Then I use a pasta machine, and again, those are in other videos. You can find out more about that later, but I'm going to press this all and run it through the machine. And what that does is it just flattens everything, which allows me to do a fun little trick, and that's to fold it over, so now I've got more layers, and roll it up. So I'm just roll, 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 nice tight little roll, and there we go. So see why I've got this fun little roll there? Now, I'm going to just do this a bit to make sure it's grabbed, and I'm going to twist it as though I was wringing out all the juices, or it was just some crazy towel full of wetness that I wanted to get all of the wetness out. Now I have a twisted mess. You know why? Because I just took layers, rolled them, and twisted them so that when I cut it open with my cutting blade, look at that fun stuff that's inside. Every time you do this, it's going to be different. If you're having a stressful day, make one of these. If you're really frustrated at the cat because it did that thing that the cat always does, even though it knows you don't like it, make one of these. This is such a great sort of meditative, relaxation, stress relaxer. And then when you're done with making these, we'll turn it into a pendant. So this little twisty mess, see how fun that is? I'm going to roll this again just to flatten it out because I want to make this into a blend. You can use it just like this, but we want to get that blend a little bit more subtle so that there's only a little bit of color going around in there. Otherwise, it distracts from the beads that we're going to add, and we want those beads to pop. So I'm going to take this and run it through the machine. All right, so now that flattens everything out. The rest of this is one of my favorite things about polymer clay that there ever, ever was, and that is doing a blend. I always call it a look at blend, because each time it goes through the machine, I have to look at it, and at a certain point, I'll be like, hey, look at that, it turned out great. So I'm gonna fold this. And what I do when I fold this is I sort of make a little present to myself of color happiness, and I fold it to see the part that amuses me the most. Then I put that back in the machine, and roll it through, 
until I have other fun stuff. And then I go, ooh, this now amuses me the most. Each time it goes through the pasta machine, you'll get a different blend because you're taking the two rollers, smashing the clay a little flatter. And when it smashes it flatter, it makes blends. I'm gonna put it through one more time. You see, each time we go through, we lose some of those stripes and we get a just this nuanced look, which is what I love. So now we have something, and I look on both sides because you might have something really exciting on the back, but I'm seeing that we have an interesting little blend that's not too crazy. I'm going to just turn this into a little pendant shape. Now I have a little bit more than I need, so I'm going to cut away some of that extra and fling it aside, and I'm going to just turn this into a ball and then into a teardrop. Now, if you had some really cool blend and you didn't want to lose it, you can do a bit more manipulation to make that blend stay where you want. Or you can just kind of roll it up in your hands into a ball and play with it that way. Either way works and they both are fun. So I'm kind of rolling it around, keeping it sort of oval and just doing a teardrop. To make a teardrop, the easiest way is to keep your hand a little loose, put it in the palm of your hand and just use the heel of your hand to kind of press on one side. That'll taper that side really nicely. All right, so now we got a super cool teardrop. I'm gonna look it all over because there might be a side that looks amazing and there might be a side that looks uh-uh. So I'm gonna find the amazing side and I'm gonna press it just a bit so that will just lay as a necklace gently in your chestular area without bouncing all around. Unless you like that look, then go with it full round. But I'm gonna go ahead and press mine so it stays front side up a little bit easier. Now we're gonna have to have a little hook on there to add a chain or a cord or however you're gonna wear this. So I'm gonna use a little eye pin right now and put that in the top so I've got that out of the way so I can add my beads. Now an eye pin is just a little pin with an eye, a little circle up at the top. And I've got this nice little golden looking one here. You can use your wire cutters to trim off the end. The way you do that is you hold it with your cutter and you aim directly at the eyes of someone else and you ping it right at, no, no. Keep it down if you can hold it with your other finger so that you're not flinging these little bits all over your studio or into other people, that would be good. Now this is how much I have, if you can see. I've got about this much, maybe about an inch there. That's good. You wanna have enough so that you can embed it and it stays in there. If it's too short, it'll pull right out. If it's too long, it's kind of a fight to have to push it all the way in. And I'm gonna take my pliers here and I'm just gonna bend a hook on the other end. Why, you might ask, and I might answer, cause, but there actually is a good reason. When you're putting metal in, wire into polymer clay, while the clay's sticky, it just like grabs, no problem. Hey, I'm happy. But polymer clay does require baking in the oven to harden. We talk about that in other videos. You can find out all about it. Go back to the first video if you wanna catch up with that. But when it hardens, that wire doesn't stay put. It's not like some magical um, you know, uh, transformation where they all become one. That hook helps hold it in so it won't yank out. When you're on the dance floor and your pendants are swinging, you don't want it to go flinging off so that hook will hold it in there, okay? So I'm gonna take my pliers. I'm gonna hold on to my eye pin. I'm gonna take that little hooky thing, kind of stick that on in there and shove. And I usually shove it all the way down so that the top of that eye pin is embedded just a little bit into the clay. So you can kind of see that there. It's just enough so that later on I can put a jump ring in and add a chain or whatever I'm gonna do. All right, that's good. Now we are ready to get started. Okay, I wanna show you a couple of things that I have to look at here. Um, we've compiled wonderful pile of Fire Mountain stuff. Piles of cultured freshwater pearls. We've got, look at all that stuff. Isn't that look great? That makes you just go, ah, I want to stick them all into this thing, which is what we're going to do. And I've also got some other stuff here, some bicones and some additional stuff. All of these are going to get put in our Julie Swirly pendant. Okay, it, wouldn't it be nice if we could just take it and we just like smush it in there and it would stick? It'd be great. Doesn't work that way. We're going to have to embed them into the clay with a pin. For this, I have chosen an eye pin with a little ball tip. The ball tip is all fancy and whatnot, so I really like using that. And I'm gonna take the fancy pin and I'm gonna just get one of these here bicone jewels 
and I'm going to just stick that right in. So you can see the eye pin is there. I've got the jewel in there. I'm going to trim that end again, get rid of some of that extra. And I'm going to take my pliers and bend a little hook, just like we did before, so that this can get embedded into here. Now, where? How do I put them in? Any way you want. That's the cool part. We're putting them all on the front of the pendant so that obviously it's not scratching on the back side, but there's no reason why you couldn't put them front and back if that amused you. And I'm just going to pick it up. I use a little bit of uh, a little pair of needle nose tweezers for this instead of my big giant sausage fingers. I find that's easier. And I'm just going to press that in and then push it all the way down. And that last little push is to push the bead to embed itself into the clay. That's important. If you don't push it enough to where the bead itself is mushed into the clay, it's kind of hanging out and spinning around and it could break easily. All right, so now when you weren't looking, I cheated and I got a whole bunch done and ready to go. So I have the joy now of just shoving them all in. I'm going to put a few in. I'm not necessarily going to put every single one I might ever want to use in here, but I'll put a few so that you can kind of see how exciting this can be. And the more you put in, the more fancy it looks and the more fun. And you can go off to the side too. And what I like to do is make clusters. Sometimes when you're designing something, we have this idea we're supposed to evenly space everything out like somebody's going to measure and if they get too close, you get points taken off. Mm -mm. Cluster, 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 cluster. Clusters are more fun. If you want to be a really cool designer, you'll be 27% more interesting if you cluster instead of space. Just saying. All right, so I'm going to put a few of these here and there willy-nilly, and then we'll take a look at a finished one. So you see what we've got going on here? We can just take these and shove. One more shove off to the side. Oh, what fun that is, right? And at the end, you get this just giant enclusteration over here, which I think is just such fun. And it catches the light, it sparkles, all that stuff. Okay, so it's done. All it needs to do is bake. And you might be wondering, oh shoot, there's pearls in there. There's beads in there. Can they go in the oven? Yes, they can. As long as it's glass or crystal or stone or natural freshwater pearls, you're fine. All right, so when this is all done and finished and you've shoved in as many things as you shove in and you're finished with it, then it does have to bake. We alluded to that before. And when it's all finished, you can choose to add uh, a shiny surface to it with some glaze, and I can talk to you about that. Um, or you can leave it just au naturel. That also works great. So I'm going to take this one, which has no glaze, and I'm going to add a glaze that's very compatible with polymer clay, and this is the satin glaze. I, I like this stuff. You have to be careful. Some glazes don't work with polymer. You're always good when you go with a glaze that's made specifically for polymer. I've shaken it up. I'm going to put a little dribble right in a little takeaway container that can be reused. I've got a nice paintbrush. All I do is take just a little and gently put it on the surface of the clay and go around those beads. You don't want to put a bunch of glaze on top of your beads. That just does not work. So all you do is that. It's so simple. And if you get excess, you can use a little piece of tissue paper or paper towel to wipe away anything extra. That usually air dries in a few minutes, so you're ready to hit the dance floor just as soon as it's dry. But there you go. You can add a little shine to your world. Okay, so what do you think? That was super easy, right? So I know you're going to have a lot of fun making this. If you want to find out more about some of the things that I use, just look at that description. There's going to be information there. And big thing, make sure you like, share, and comment. Like this video, share it with your friends who want to create, and comment. What did you like most about it? Did you have a stone that you used that you thought was amazing? What kind of color blend did you find the most exciting? All right, happy creating, and I will see you back here for yet another one of these Secrets of Polymer Clay series. We're going to have some more fun soon. Mm -hmm.